Oh yeah. Hey, did you just unzip? No, I like. I heard it unzip. I straightened out my sweatshirt sleeves. That's the word I'm looking for. It's sleeves. <laughs> I'm getting comfortable. I'm getting in position. I'm getting ready. Hey, guys. Welcome to the Wolf Den Podcast. podcast. Everything's fine over here. No one's taking off their pants. Nothing. I got got new jeans. Ooh, look at you. These are new jeans, but they're already like getting holes like here and in the pocket area. That's what you get from buying from Old Navy. (laughs) So I ordered two pairs of jeans. Yes. One of them is slim fit. Okay. Which is apparently not what the kids do anymore. Really? The other one is athletic slim fit. Okay. And they are just not slim fit. (laughs) They're two completely different fits. Listen, I like to have some comfort and movement in my pants. So I just get like. Because of all the athleticism that that you (laughs) need in your daily life. So I just get like box standard straight fit. And that's fine. And they're not too tight, not too baggy. Slim's I don't fine. Yeah, I don't look like a ballerina wearing tights. <laughs> so that's what I do. I've been getting the same jeans for like twenty years. Yeah, and I just want those. And right. I, I, there's no like, give me these again. Well, because they keep changing them. Yeah, and like every jean manufacturer does it differently. Mm-hmm. You know, we can, I've gotten hundred fifty dollar jeans, and I've gotten twenty dollar jeans. Yeah. And the twenty dollars jeans mm-hmm. are great. Yeah, that's why you don't spend one hundred fifty dollars <laughs> on fucking jeans. Oh, the price has gone up now. They're like sixty dollars, but still, okay, they're still better than the expensive ones. I've you know gotten. who's got really good jeans? Who's got good jeans? Target, just the Target house mm-hmm. brand of jeans. Good fellas, they are comfortable. They last a long time. Also, Costco, like fifty bucks. Oh, for, I'm not getting Costco for a pair of Izod's. Is that that's that's, that's an actual company? That's, that's an actual a, company. A, yeah. It's not just their company. No, they own an arena in Jersey. Oh, I do know that. <laughs> yeah, I do so, know that. There you go. I don't believe you. Fashion here on the Wolf Den. How podcast. does 1995 Poppy know that I had All Saints jeans? You were like an All Saints stand for a long time. Yeah, their jeans. That's why I got their jeans. Yeah, and their jeans. No, <laughs> no, no. Thank you. Not better than my Abercrombie and Fitch jeans. <laughs> Uh, all right i mean whatever the jock jeans i mean you're skinny enough to fit in them if my fat ass were to walk no into... fatso's in Abercrombie. <laughs> exactly they would just pelt tomatoes at me it's they not the a... same as it used to be they used to just have a hot man sitting yeah. there standing outside <laughs> of the store they don't do that anymore uh... now he's ugly <laughs> <laughs> Hi, right, hello. We're supposed to be talking about games. Yes, uh, we are. Jin Wong, thanks for the 20 months. Hi, Bob and Will. Hope your day is going well. It's going just oh so fantastic. It's okay. Um, I am currently dealing with a lot of sinus congestion, so if you hear a lot of <laughs> from me this podcast, God. that's what that is. You're going to be one of those post-nasal drip guys who uh, sounds like a guinea pig? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we have a bunch of different things to talk about yes. today. Uh, we have to talk about... Last week, we talked about uh, emulators coming to iOS. Yes. Uh, this week, they have come to iOS and immediately left <laughs> iOS. It's amazing how that happened. Yeah, so we're going to hold off on getting iOS emulators for the time being because of some issues that have happened. But yes. uh, after that... We got to talk about freaking game showcases are happening now all of a sudden. Yeah. Uh, apparently. Uh, well, Nintendo's got one coming. Yeah. There was one last week that was focused on indie games. Okay. Some pretty big indie games, as it were. Uh, also, a bunch of Star Wars Outlaws bullshit. There's a lot of Star Wars Outlaws bullshit. We had the mm-hmm. reveal last week, like the story trailer. Which we already talked about. We already yes. had some bullshit to talk about last week. But there's more bullshit. Uh, that's amazing. That's See, that's the problem with Ubisoft games. Even if you're excited for them, like the bullshit never ends. It just keeps <laughs> it's, coming. It's kind of amazing. Yeah. Uh, but before we talk about that, yeah, we'll talk about the indie world. It's tomorrow. Nintendo's having an yeah. indie world tomorrow. Um. We're gonna get our hypes. We're gonna get our hopes sky high. I didn't realize and then this. Be until, disappointed when it doesn't live up to the hype. I didn't even see this until I saw your show notes. I don't think anybody cares about the indie world. Yeah, I don't think anybody. I mean, people might say they don't, but like every every Nintendo Direct and every indie world, everybody watches it, 
hoping that they're going to get the, the first look at Metroid Prime 4 or some dumb shit like I'm that. I'm going to watch it. And then it. it doesn't happen. I'm going to watch it. But am I waking up at 10 a.m. Eastern time? No, no. thank you. <laughs> uh, also, we got new games. New NES, SNES games on Switch Online. Yes. Uh, so three, three SNES classics available now for Switch Online members. Uh, Wrecking Crew 98, Super R-Type, and Amazing... Uh, Hebereke. I think I got that right. Hebereke. Yeah. I don't know what that is. I don't uh, know what any of these... I only know Super R type. Well, because that's the only one that came out in North America. Wrecking Crew 98 <clears throat> and Amazing Hebereke were Super Famicom games. I only know Super R type because of Nick Arcade. Right. And R type is a fairly well-known uh, side-scrolling shoot 'em up yes, game. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah I, this I, is I the super that. version of it. So I don't know what Amazing Hebereke is. Again, never came out in America. Looks Japan like only. gang beasts. <laughs> yeah. Um, so R type, yeah, that's just a side scrolling shooter. Yeah. Uh, Wrecking Crew ninety eight. I this, didn't know there was a Wrecking Crew ninety eight. I am familiar with the original Wrecking Crew on the NES. Supposedly, this is a Satellaview game. Oh. Yeah, that's why we didn't uh, hear about it. Oh, that's interesting. It's interesting to me because. You know that Mario is in the first Wrecking Crew. Yeah. He's like the guy in it. Yeah, but yeah. like, it's like vaguely Mario. It's yeah. not like actually Mario. Um, This is, they just put Mario in Yeah. It. This is just straight up Mario yeah. in Wrecking Crew. And he's wearing a hard hat and it's looking very Mario maker to me. Yeah. Uh, So that's cool. It's cool looking. Look at yeah. him. Look at him in the little hat. Uh, Just a side scroller shooter. Yeah. That's <laughs> what I said. Uh, So... There you go. You got uh, you got your three new Super Nintendo games to switch online. Yeah. They just released uh, games last month for uh, was it Game Boy Advance? I think so. Yeah. They, they hopefully they're rolling out. Yeah. Uh, Slowly but surely they're yeah. starting to add more stuff to it. Yeah. Uh. Okay. So that's that. Uh, thank you to Riley for the hundred bits. Also, I love indie games. By the way, I'll be. Uh, oh, let me read this in order. Thanks for the 100 bits. What's up, Wolf Bros? Happy Tuesday. Did y'all see Silk Song get raided in Aussie Land? You think we're seeing it tomorrow by chance? Uh, it also, we talked about it last week, I think. It got uh, It's on the Microsoft Store or something? Yeah, something like that. Uh, I'm gonna say no, it's not gonna be in the indie world. But um, there's a chance that it might be. Yeah. But just, I want everybody's expectations to be yeah. bare minimum for the indie world tomorrow. Mr. Rock PR, thanks for the 13 months. And Riley says, also, I love indie games, by the way. I'll still be excited, even if Silk Song doesn't come, which is very likely. Mm -hmm. You know. Yeah. You know. Already. You know, you know. Uh, do you want to talk about your MSI Claw experiences yeah, I guess now or later? Okay. Uh, we can talk about it later. Whenever you, you steer the ship, whenever okay. you want me to talk about it. Because I didn't get a lot of game time on it. It's really I, more of I a first talk, impression. I want to talk a decent amount about it. Let's talk about the Apple stuff because that's the top of the yes. That's okay, the that's the main topic of the of the show. Let's talk about that, and then we'll talk about Will's experience with the MSI Claw that I gave him the other the other week. Okay, all right. Earlier this month, Apple quietly adjusted its Apple Store Apple App Store review guides, uh, adding new language speci uh, specifically stating retro game console emulator apps can all refer to download games marking the first time the company has allowed emulators on ios hooray. hooray it didn't take long for someone to take advantage of this new allowance igba a game boy emulator made its debut on the app store over the weekend quickly topping the free apps charts um the introductory emulators seem to play on apple uh, seem to play by Apple's new rules. As piracy is obviously illegal, the app would only run ROMs you downloaded yourself to the Files app on your iPhone. iPhone gamers rejoiced. Then Apple removed the emulator from its marketplace just days after it launched, iPhone gamers mourned. Uh, while we still don't know exactly why Apple took away IGBA, there seems to be a likely explanation, and it has nothing to do with pirated games. Developer uh, Riley Testute uh, took two threads on Sunday to highlight the fact that IGBA appears to be a knockoff of their own emulator, GBA for iOS. We're getting news from threads now? Yeah, man. It's the first time I've seen threads thread, mentioned thread in this the hottest, the hottest new social media app from the people over at Facebook. Uh, despite Testu uh, not giving permission to use his code, somehow IGBA managed to pass through Apple's strict app reviews process to land on the app store itself. Uh, 
Testute uh, has been trying to launch their alternative app store, All Store, in the European Union for over a month and plans to oh. uh, plans on publishing Delta, a revised version of GBA for iOS, once that happens. Uh, with all this up in the air, Testute uh, says he's particularly frustrated Apple was so quick to approve a ripoff of his app. Um, that said, it seems Apple took Testute's claim seriously. Uh, this writer assumes the company launched an investigation and once Apple confirmed uh, IGBA was indeed uh, from stolen code, made from stolen code, it promptly removed it from the App Store. The process seems to have followed what is outlined in the company's app review guidelines. Uh, make sure your app only includes content that you created or that you have license to use. Your app may be removed if you've stepped over the line and used content without permission. Of course, this also means someone else's app may be removed if they have borrowed from your work. Uh, there is a lot to... Uh, there's lots to be learned from this experience. First, don't steal. It's wrong, and Apple will boot you from the App Store for doing so, no matter how successful you are. Second, and more pertinent to most of us, uh, is to not download the first emulator that hits the iOS App Store. Uh, Tetsuit says IGBA was rife with ads and tracking, which means those happy retro gamers playing Pokemon on their iPhones this weekend likely had their privacy breached. There's no evidence IGBA was malicious, but it's easy to imagine other emu uh, emulator apps sneaking onto the App Store with bad intentions. Uh, while you can't download IGBA going forward, it doesn't disappear from your iPhone if you already have it. While you can continue to use it, given the situation, it is recommended that you just delete it. Uh, while this change in Apple's policy is positive, it's important to take a breath. Um, it's more than likely Apple is going to be even more stringent with its emulator with its emulation reviews going forward, but it might be best to wait until an emulator has been further vetted before diving into your favorite retro games. Yeah, so I heard the news that it got put up in the morning and then in by the afternoon it was uh people were warning about it because yeah. it was immediately uh evident that it had a lot of ads so it seems like uh people were like the 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 developer was just trying to make a quick buck right also uh and more concerningly it requested your location at all times which is uh really bizarre not needed for a retro game emulator that must be some sort of uh advertising yeah. thing they must oh, have absolutely. made some yeah. money from from selling location data mm -hmm. or something I didn't try it because I wanted to wait until there were a couple. I didn't right. want to just get the first one because there's there's no chance that one that nobody's ever heard of before is going to be the good one. Yeah. No. Yeah. There, you know that they're all the first ones to market are going to be yeah. a problem. Uh, but had I seen the location data, like it'll ask, it'll say this app yeah. wants to use location. I don't know that I would. I don't know that a red flag would come up to me. Because I just, everything wants that. Yeah, for I know. Me, so I so, just always just go for it. Yeah. I like on Android, it'll say, this is what the app wants from you. Yeah. And you can pick and choose what you don't want the app right. to have. So that's something. I don't know why Apple doesn't have that. Well, Apple lists it in the app store itself. Mm -hmm. Like they expect you to like take the time to like read the app store list. But on, on the app store, it's all or nothing. Yeah. You either get the app and, and, submit to all of the things that the app wants from you or you don't get the app at all and on yeah. android you can say i want the app but it doesn't get to look at my location right so that's awesome i i guess maybe that would like limit some features but who gives a shit yeah. like let me limit my features um anyway i would still recommend holding off on getting any emulation uh 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 any emulators off of the app store until they're vetted and other people try them. And again, there are only like a handful of emulators uh, that are out that people use. There's like only a handful yeah, of like I the best gonna, emulators. I was going to say like we live in a time where like people know what emulators to get, you know, RetroArch, uh, EmuDeck, like there are well-known reputable emulators yeah. out there. It wasn't like, you know, back in the day where you just get anything and like hope it worked. Yeah. So, like, just sit back and wait for, like, the emulators that you already know to show up on iOS. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. I mean, it's possible that some of these ones that we already know won't make it over there and someone will do a fork of it. But yeah. 
we need to make sure that those are vetted. Let people like like me or Retro Game Core yeah. or somebody uh, try a couple of them out before you download them. Yeah. Uh, don't don't jump the gun because you're gonna end up uh, with some shitty software. Um, what else? So it this one used the files app to get stuff. It just that's fine. I mean, I mean, yeah, that's how it, it's that's how you're gonna have to get this stuff running anyway. Well, I was I'm hoping for some sort of uh Dropbox or Google Drive integration yeah. or something, but uh in this case they're just Game Boy games, so it's they're not that big anyway. Yeah. So it's it's not a big deal. Um there's so there's a there's a lot. There's a lot to talk about with the emulators on iOS. Um we could also talk about how the second uh emulator yeah. came to iOS <laughs> today. Yeah. This was this was this was dropped in our lap today and then it was immediately removed. So there's an app called uh Bimmy. This is from 9 to 5 Mac. Uh-huh. Uh Bimmy NES emulator is the latest game emulation app for iPhone, iPad and Mac. Update, developer decided to pull it. <laughs> so there's an NES emulator. Right. And they decided, you know what? We're done. We're not doing it. So uh, I don't need to go on about this emulator too much. Uh, I didn't try it. Um, but from the developer's mouth himself, he said, I'm so sorry, everyone. I removed the app out of fear. No one reached out to me pers- uh, pressuring me to remove it, but I'd rather not have the risk. Okay. That's sad to see. Yeah. I think everybody's immediate reaction when they see one of these uh, emulators being removed is, oh, no. Are they actually not going to be allowed? Yeah. Because we were just talking last week about how great this is that all of these apps are going to be allowed on mm-hmm. iOS. Um, and no, that's not the case. It yeah. looks like uh, they're just some of them. Well, one of them was malicious and another one, the guy got cold feet. Yeah. Uh, but Which, that doesn't mean it wasn't malicious. Maybe he got cold feet because it was, it was malicious. Well, maybe, yeah. I mean, or maybe he didn't know like the full story of the first one. So he got, he pulled it because he got That's scared true. that like, you know, Apple's, you know, just doing a sweeping ban on emulators. Also, he doesn't want to be like the, the first one. The, right. He doesn't want to be the one right. that, get, yeah. that ruins it for everybody. Yeah. Um, and I tweeted, I said, hey, when are we going to get a fucking emulator that doesn't get, yeah. isn't trying to be malicious or gets removed immediately? Like, what the hell? Yeah. And a lot of people said, I'll do it if you just pay the fee. Apparently, there's a fee to like yeah. upload the, the app because you can upload an emulator for a price. Like, you can charge money. Right. And that, that's how it is on Android. Some yeah. of them are like five bucks or something. Um, but nobody wants to do that because they're afraid that's going to be profiting off of somebody else's IP. So yeah. uh, they want it to be free. Mm-hmm. And unfortunately, it costs money to put it on the App Store at all. Right. So. Now, a lot of, pretty much all emulators are uh, forks of, like, old open source stuff. They're all, like, yeah. copies of each other, you know? Uh-huh. So, that's why I thought it was a little interesting when uh, IGBA got taken down for being a ripoff of another emulator. Well, I know, like... Because I was like, isn't that what they all are? <laughs> There's, like, certain, like, rules when it comes to, like, open source software. Like, you can't just... It's open source, yes, but you can't just take it and make your own thing of it. Like, you, there are certain, like, guidelines you have to follow. Well, I think in this case, the start-to-finish entire app was just a copy and paste. Right. Like, there's different, like, front-ends and overlays and yeah. stuff that you put on top of the emulator that everybody else uses, yeah. you know? Because um, it is just... It's all borrowed code from... Yeah. Even from the Game Boy Advance, you know? <laughs> like, yeah. So... That's why people responded to me on Twitter and said, I'll do it because you can just fork yeah. the, the open source stuff that's already available and just put it out there. But again, it costs money, so yeah. nobody wants to do it. Uh, but that doesn't mean we won't see them anytime soon. Like uh, These just so happen to be the first ones that got approved uh-huh. for whatever reason. So even in the first article that we read, uh, the the guy who made the emulator, uh, the the actual emulator in the first place, what's his name? Toot, toot, someone with a T? Yeah. Tess Toot. He said he submitted his. So his is submitted, right. but the knockoff got uh, approved first. Yeah. So hopefully his will be there eventually. I'm hoping for RetroArch. 
Yeah, at any, I mean that that'll point. that's got to come at some point. I don't. That's on everything. I yeah. can't imagine that not making it over to to iOS. They might already have an iOS version like for a jailbreak and for a jailbroken iPhone. It's probably just on the old to, store. Yeah, I'm I'm actually gonna look right now because they have look they have Windows. They got Linux, Haiku, whatever that is, Raspberry Pi, Android. Oh, that's all. I, oh, there it is. There, yeah. Oh no, Mac OS. Well, go Mac up. OS, iOS, right here. Yeah, yeah. There you go. So they just need to put that on the. I'm sure they submitted it. Yeah. I mean, if it works, you know, on a side loaded thing, it'll it 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 should work immediately. Yeah. Um. So that'll be good for everything. You know, that's not 3D. Maybe you'll be fine with doing something like N64 yeah. and PlayStation or whatever. But I'm waiting for Moopin. I'm waiting for uh, Melon DS. Uh, even if I want to do Game Boy Advance, I'm waiting for MGBA or GPSB, you know, stuff mm -hmm. like that. I'm waiting for the ones that I've heard of before. Uh, or for somebody to come out and say, hey, this one's actually good. Yeah. Uh, this new one that we we're just hearing about. So uh, it's coming. They're all coming. Just you got to you got to sit for a minute. Dolphin. Yeah. Everybody wants Dolphin. Yeah. Dolphin, I'd imagine, was submitted because that is on the alt store. Yeah. Um, so that's already running on on iOS. So I'd wait another like two, three weeks before we get like actual stuff going on iOS. Mm -hmm. When are third party stores coming to the EU? Says Sir Griffith. I, I don't know. I, they have to get approved. Don't yeah. They? So, um, yeah, they, I mean, they could just not approve any of them ever. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Problem with emulation on iOS is the lack of <coughs> JIT. JIT for emulators like Dolphin and Dreamcast. What is JIT? No Dolphin until we get JIT. Uh, just in time inventory system? No. <laughs> Finally, me and three people can play Melee on GameCube controllers on my tiny-ass screen and smell <laughs> each other's breath. <laughs> Live code execution. Just-in-time emulation. Ah, there you go. I got it. Google was right. <laughs> uh, well, uh, I, I, I don't know what that... I'm not, I'm not well-versed. Emulates the architecture, and without it, Dolphin won't work basically at all. Okay. Does it work on uh, the alt store? Because I played it and it was fine. I, yeah. pl I played it on the alt store before. Um. All right. Well, anyway. We had just before iOS 17. On all store, you need to enable it with a computer in the back end. It can work, but Apple won't allow it. All emulation, but allow emulation, but not allowing JIT kind of sucks. All right. Well, I need to. We're going to cross that bridge eventually because right. there will be like, you know, these emulators that uh, are once we get to like 3D emulation, like N64 and, and GameCube and stuff. Um, Things will probably run a lot worse yeah. unless they enable something. Anyway, does Bob only answer questions from Twitch? Does that answer your question? Uh, <laughs> all right, let's talk about your MSI Claw. Oh How has boy, that been? Uh, it's been an experience. Let me tell you, I, I've I've come to a lot what, of what realizations. Have you, what have you done on it so, so far? So, I haven't done much on it. Mm -hmm. I set it up. The first thing I did was I basically I just logged you out of Steam and logged myself in. Let's back up. Okay. You had a Steam Deck. I had a Steam Deck. It almost immediately... Well, how long did you have it? I had a couple of months. A couple of months. It yeah. was my old Steam Deck. Yeah. I had it from like, what is it? November to like January, I think. Okay. Yeah. And, uh, then all and sudden, you were playing on it. Yeah. And then uh, Arkham Knight crashed. Arkham, Arkham Asylum. Arkham Asylum? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Arkham Asylum should not have crashed. Yeah. Arkham Asylum crashed and now it... The whole thing just won't work at all. Yeah. It's uh, very weird. I've tried everything, and it just the whole thing just doesn't work. Yeah. Uh, so now you're using an MSI claw. Yes. And how's that? Uh, so start from the beginning. I All I really did was log you out of Steam and log myself in. I didn't try any of the other stores, fronts. I didn't like go into Windows and mess with any settings and stuff. 
I just did that. I immediately downloaded Arkham Asylum to see A, if it would work, and B, if it, was, if it saved my data before everything started uh, came crashing down. Download the game. We still have a Steam Deck with, that you're logged into it. It, it turns right. on, so right. we can get it to get your saves. Right. If, if well, to cut to the chase. Actually, no, we can't. I wiped it like three times. Yeah. So to if cut it's to not the chase, there, no, it's not it remembered uh, where I was. Okay. It's it remembered my save game. It was in the room I was last in before everything came crashing down. Okay. So everything I had done in the game, like, uh, was there up until that point. I'll do one more thing. I did the thing in there. No, I don't have to play Arkham uh, Asylum again. But it, it wasn't just download the game and start playing it again. I downloaded the game. It made me download a Windows update for that game specifically. That's interesting. And then trying to boot it from Steam kept crashing. It would not boot from Steam. I had to actually go into the MSI uh, UI itself and boot it from there. And that's actually, weird. Scratch. I had to uninstall the game, reinstall it, and then boot it from the MSI uh, UI. That's really weird because all the MSI UI does is open Steam. Yeah. But when you press the when you press the game on the MSI UI, it you see the Steam yeah, window. Yeah, I see up. it boot up Steam and then boot up the game. Yeah, but for some reason I couldn't boot the game straight from Steam. That's really bizarre. Yeah. Maybe so. So when you had to download an update specifically for Arkham, uh, where did the update come from? Windows. It was like a Windows NT update. Interesting. Yeah, I'm wondering if MSI because like when you open a game up on Steam, you can set it. You can tell Steam to open the game up in weird ways. You yeah. can tell Steam, open the game up in windowed mode. Open the game up uh, at this resolution yeah. or something. I'm wondering if uh, that Windows update told the MSI claw, like like your launcher is telling it now to open it yeah. up a certain way in like some sort of safe mode or something. Yeah. But does the game run fine? The game, yeah, the, I eventually did get the game to run. Because the one thing about the MSI Claw is that it's Intel. Yeah. And uh, well, that's apparently, cut, could get a little weird. Cut to, I figure, all right, I did Arkham Asylum. The next logical step is Arkham City. So I booted up Arkham City. First problem, the game uh, said it was in full screen, but uh, it only took up like that much of the window. So, like, if this is the screen of the claw, Arkham City was, like, just in the top left corner. <laughs> okay. And Arkham City is an older game. So, like, first it has a, a boot screen, and then it launches into the game proper. And in the game proper, you cannot adjust the graphical settings. You can only do it um, from the initial boot screen. Now, th th there were a lot of issues with the PC versions of the Arkham games. Yeah. And... It was Ar Arkham Knight. Yeah, yeah, it was evident around that time that these games were not made for the computer. They well, were made for Well, a lot of games console. around that time were made for console and then just yeah. ported over and to that's, PC. And that's proof of that, yeah. is that you cannot yeah. adjust yeah. settings because why would you need to do exactly. that on a console? So I, I figured it all out. Well, I didn't figure it all out. I figured out the screen issue. Mm -hmm. I got it. I set it to 1080p, and now it runs at the right resolution, but there is still slowdown. There's a lot more slowdown than there was on the Steam Deck. I don't know if it's because Arkham City is a bigger game, but well, it's still an older game. What resolution are you running it at? 1080p. Now, the Steam Deck is not 1080p. Right. But the claw is 1080p. Yeah. You're going to have to lower the resolution. But the resolution <laughs> was lowered, and it was, in a, it was in a fucking corner of the screen. <laughs> that has to be a different setting. Right. It's got to be full screen 720p. Yeah. I might have to like just bump it down just a little bit more and play with it to, to get it running at like a consistent... Like, for example, I, when I, I test Resident Evil 4 on everything, just yeah. because it's one of the games that I yeah. have, um, and Resident Evil 4, uh, this resolution can scale to whatever the monitor is. Right. On the Steam Deck, it runs great because it's 800p. Right. And on the Asus Ally and the Lenovo Legigo and even the MSI Claw, it chugs a little bit uh -huh. because it wants to be 1080p. Right. But if I want to compare it to the Steam Deck, I got to lower the resolution to 720p yeah. so that it's a fair comparison. I did download, because uh, I have Resident Evil 2 and I have uh, Hellblade and a couple other like more modern games I want to try and like put it through a space because the Steam Deck just did it no problem. Yeah. So I'm going to like try the more modern games to see like how they handle it. There's a, still a lot like... The form factor is comfortable. Like I like that it's smaller than the Steam Deck. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know how to program the back buttons yet. That's not really intuitive as it is on the Steam Deck. Yeah, I never tried. The the Steam uh, 
the Steam Big Picture Mode launcher has like, you see the Xbox button icon. So you press that to, you know, launch the side menu and stuff. There's no equivalent of it on the MSI Claw. So like, I just keep having to press the the touch screen in order to launch the side menu. Yeah, I, t I, yeah, I use the touch screen. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, I thought there was a button. No, but I don't know what it is. No, there's two MSI buttons, one for like the launcher and right. then one for like the side menu, but there's no like Xbox button equivalent. Right. That that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, I just had to touch this. Yeah. So like it's passable is what I'll say. <laughs> it's it's a passable experience. I think my biggest take again, I haven't had like much time with it, but I think my biggest takeaway of it so far is and this is this is my big hot take and my big PC gaming hot take. Can you play music on your computer? Uh, yeah. Would you call that a stereo? No. Okay. You just because you can play games on Windows does not make it a gaming machine. But but I would that, I would this is what I'll say. Uh I I wouldn't call this an MP3 player. Right. But I don't have one anymore because I can right. just play MP3s on right. this, you it's, know. It it's a matter of convenience. I think what my point is, you know, for all the faults of the Steam Deck. It was primarily used for gaming, just like how consoles, a primary focus of a console is for gaming. When you start, you know, messing with something that's supposed to be a jack of all trades, like Windows, it winds up becoming a master of none. You can optimize it as best you can, but there's going to be like little problems here or there that breaks the seamlessness of the experience. Are you speaking specifically about Windows-based handhelds, or are you also talking about the Steam Deck? I am more specifically talking about Windows-based handhelds. Okay. I feel like the, my issues would be lessened on an actual full-size desktop, yeah. because I'll have a mouse and keyboard and a bigger screen to like actually hey, figure out what the problem is. You uh, have a dock for that computer, right? I have I have the, the SNES dock for the Steam Deck. Well, but you also have the one for your yes. laptop, right? Yes. The MSI Club, plug it in, you're good. Right. That's, that. that's currently in storage in the attic because I'm rearranging the office. Okay. But aside from that. <laughs> um, so, yes, you're 100% correct. There are a lot of pain points in Windows specifically. Yeah. Uh, there's some pain points with the Steam Deck, there too, as we've points, seen. But I found that there were, when it was working, there were less pain yes. points. It, it's kind yeah. of amazing how, how yeah. they've been able to bridge the gap. And Windows handhelds are trying their best but they are bottlenecked by windows yeah it's just it's just how it is yeah um in terms of the msi claw you have some extra jankiness because it's uh, it's intel based but you've yeah. only really seen that with uh the arkham games yeah uh and those are gonna be pretty difficult anyway um I would also say you might have less of a problem if you could just boot straight into big picture mode instead of having the MSI thing come up. Yeah. But you need that in order to play Arkham. Yeah. Because Arkham wouldn't run otherwise. I'm going to try it again with Resident Evil 2 because it's a more modern game. Um, and it, it was specifically labeled um, deck verified. Okay. So I want to see like... That'll be fine. Maybe that'll be better. I did Resident Evil 4 and yeah. that ran fine. So Resident Evil 2 should yeah. be fine. Uh, but yeah, if you could boot the system and it loads straight into Steam Big Picture Mode, it'll mm -hmm. just be like a Steam Deck. But I mean, uh, I thought the MSI launcher was fine. Yeah, uh, I think it's like, it's passable for it's what passable, it does. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it, it had most of the stuff that I wanted on there yeah. anyway. But I also often found myself just closing it using the desktop anyway. Yeah. Um, all right, so you didn't have like a horrible experience. You still, no. you didn't want to throw it out immediately. No, not immediately. I like, you know, like I said, I'm still like, I didn't get that much time to play with it. I'm still like messing around with it. I don't hate it. And I'm not, again, I'm not like knocking the whole concept of like Windows based handhelds right. or like, you know, I still think PC gaming sucks consoles <laughs> all the way. But like the, the point is like, there there's still something to it. I just feel like the Steam Deck had it more down pat than what the other what the competition has been doing so far yeah i would yeah definitely say so that, that's definitely the case all right any notifications that i missed dark type with 100 bits says when do they make super dark type get it i get it all right 
You know what that means. Okay. Backlog! 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 Just gonna be sniffling over the theme song this whole time. I think there's like a little delay. Okay. With the, with the uh, our yelling of the backlog. <laughs> I swear we've got perfect timing. Yes. Uh, hi guys, welcome to the backlog. This is a segment of our podcast where we uh. Go through we our go backlog through our entire game. video game collection. Every game we've ever bought, we put into a Google Doc. Uh, almost 40 years worth of gaming history between the two of us. And we're going to say we're going to pick one at random Christ. and talk about it regardless of whether or not we've played it. Remember, I'm only three years away from 40. <laughs> <laughs> and if you think I've gone downhill now. This is number 811. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Sonic the Hedgehog 4, episode 1. Do you want to just do both of them? Yes. Okay. So yes. Sonic the Hedgehog 4. This is very controversial game. This is a game. very controversial game. Uh, this was an Xbox Live Arcade game, yes. correct? Yes. It was available. So it was available. Which on version is this? The 360 version. Because we also had it on iOS. We had it on iOS. Yes. This game, uh, this game was available on Xbox 360, uh, PC, PS3, iOS, uh, and at least episode one was available on the Wii. <laughs> Okay, I didn't, yeah. I didn't realize that. Yeah. God, what resolution is this? This is 1440p. It looks like oh, Jesus. trash, dude. So blurry. Yeah. Uh, now, looking back on it, this game looks terrible. It, yeah. It has not aged well, I don't think. I, Especially in terms of the graphics. This was an incredibly forgettable game. Yeah. But I remember it reviewed really poorly, and I really liked it. See, I remember it reviewed fine. Like, reviewed fine yeah. i remember people hated it well yeah the the community hated it okay because it was supposed to be a throwback game it was supposed to be a return to form like of the genesis era sonic games and the community rejected it because it didn't control like the genesis era oh, games. okay because it it didn't have the same momentum based gameplay that the original games had it, it got 74 on metacritic i mean for a sonic User score 5.6 for a sonic game in 2010 74 is really good okay <laughs> So, it didn't control. I remember it controlled fine. So, like, you remember on the old Sonic games where, like, uh, where you were on, like, the loop-to-loop, -loop, like, you can gain momentum, like, going, uh, depending on how much momentum you had, you can go up yeah. the loop-to-loop -loop a certain point and then come back down. This didn't work like that. You could just do the loop-to-loop. -loop. Oh, it just kind of sucked you in? Yeah. Yeah, I don't like when they suck you in. Yeah, no. It looks like it has homing attacks, which is yeah, not a normal have, 2D Sonic game. It did have homing, game homing attacks, yeah. Thing. But it, it was fine. It was, uh, it was I, You know, I think I just liked it because uh, I loved Sonic 3 so much. Yeah. And this was just a, supposed to be a continuation of that 20 years later. Yeah. You know? You know, it was, in, it was interesting that it was specifically episode one. Um, but That sucked. That yeah. I don't like. Because <laughs> episode two came out two years later. That's crazy. I don't know if I've ever played episode two. Episode two, they added Tails. I don't remember playing episode two. Yeah. Because, like, by the time it came out, like, nobody cared. Yeah, everybody already the, hated the first yeah, one. Yeah, everyone hated the first one. They finally, I mean, part two was a little bit better, but, you know, it still was saddled with being a part of Sonic 4. Mm -hmm. You know, and by the time it came out, like, people had started to move on. You yeah, know? I did. Yeah. I didn't play it at all. Yeah. But no, I, I enjoyed the mix between 3D and 2D Sonic in, in the way that there's homing attacks and also, you know, moving yeah. in a 2D space. I mean, I guess the momentum was... I gotta go back and try it because, I mean, I, ha I think I have it on iOS as well. Yeah. Uh, I know it's uh, it's playable on Xbox via backwards compatibility. Oh, so, so I can just get it on my Xbox? Get it on Xbox, yeah. Okay. I wonder if that works on... Uh... On like Game Pass, or like Steam. I don't know if it's on Game Pass. Or remote players. Yeah. Something. Well, I I'm can, sure you, you can. Know, I'm sure you can remote. I'll just freaking download it in my living room and yeah. give it a, and give it a go. Yeah. Uh. Again, I but I remember liking it. But what also sucks is that it is <laughs> episode <laughs> one. So I think there's only like four levels. Yeah, there were only four levels, and then episode two uh, was the next four levels. So this. I'm looking at a long play here, uh -huh. and it is an hour long. Yeah. So that's kind of... I mean, usually these long plays are pretty quick. Like, yeah. they usually do it a little quicker than normal. But an hour, that's not That's well, not great. Well, what's cool is if you, uh, if you had both games, you get uh, an episode Metal, uh, which was you could play some of the levels again as Metal Sonic. And that actually tried to 
be a direct sequel to Sonic CD. Oh. So, like, it picks up where Sonic CD left off, and you play as Metal Sonic going through the levels of Sonic 4, like, backwards. So, I just looked up a uh, long play of Sonic 3 just to see, and that's mm-hmm. also an hour. So, yeah. like, you know what? Now, thinking about it, like, you know, old games seem longer because you play them over and over and yeah. over again because you can't, you know, they're yeah, hard. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, you can't get through it. But, uh, you yeah, know, you can play a Sega Genesis game in, like, a good hour. Mm-hmm. And this is episode one. So, I mean, what was this? Like, 20 bucks when it came out? No, it was less than that. Less I want to say that? it was like ten. And maybe that's why I liked it. Ten yeah. bucks, a little quick, little romp. Yeah, get me going. You know uh, what? Also, there weren't any two D Sonic games. This yeah, was like the first were... one in twenty years. Yeah, and it was like you know it was a big deal. They really you know despite the fact that it was like polygonal graphics, they really tried to like emulate the Genesis era with its soundtrack, with its level design, with its freaking uh, uh, bonus levels. Yeah, the worst Sonic bonus levels. Yeah, this one sucked. <laughs> like I hate when they like bring that back. And it, uh, the levels are very stereotypical Sonic yeah. levels. Like it, it was, was the second one? Yeah, we're already doing a casino? Yeah, I mean, they were playing the hits. They were trying to, like, they were trying to remind people why they like Sonic in the first place. You know, because this is coming after, you know, what was, what was before this? It was, you know, Sonic 06. It was Sonic Unleashed. Sonic and the Black Knight. And there's all those other oh, shitty all Sonic games. terrible Sonic games. Yeah. That's why I like this yeah. so much. Because it was some semblance of... Normalcy. Uh, normalcy, yeah. yeah, in the Sonic world. And it was a one-two punch, because, like, episode one came out the same year as Sonic Colors, and that was well-received by everyone. So True. everyone was like, oh, okay, Sonic's back. So Sonic is okay again. And then, like, when people actually played Sonic 4, I guess, for a long enough period of time, they realized, no, nah, this isn't the same. Yeah. You know, and then by the time episode two came out, you know, they added Tails. They really tried to make it a f- bigger event, but, like, like I said, people have moved on. They were supposed to do more episodes. But I guess because it took them two years to do one episode, and people were like, you know, cold on Sonic 4 mm-hmm. by that point, they just gave up. Which I think stinks because, and I think an episode three with four more levels could have created like a fully robust experience. I think somebody needs to do an audit of the Sonic uh, team, or, or, the, or Sega, and what they've been doing with Sonic. Yeah. I, I don't understand how you could fuck it up this bad for so long <laughs> i don't know man it's like especially i because, mean at this time it was rough yeah this time was really rough for sonic yeah but then they had colors and then generations was right after that so things were starting to look up and then and then they tanked and then it. nothing yeah. for years and years yeah until mania mania well that's another thing too like sonic mania essentially erase this game yeah sonic like people mania treat became mania. the sonic 4 exactly and i think rightfully so I yeah think that's a I'm, much I think better game yeah that is uh did we we didn't do a sonic we didn't mania do sonic mania. mania yeah uh, sonic mania is uh it, i still like sonic 3 the most just it, but sonic mania is rightfully in consideration for like the best two they're neck sonic and neck game. they're yeah. kind of neck and neck uh so this is nowhere close. No. <laughs> this is st- I still liked this game, uh, but it is nowhere close to uh, any of the other Sonic games. No. Any of the other 2D no, Sonic I f- games. And, I f- and, you know, it kind of stinks because, you know, I think they were, they definitely had something here. Mm-hmm. Uh, they were definitely, like, trying to do a classic-style Sonic game at a time when, like, classic-style Sonic games just were not a thing. Yeah. Um, and I think they came fairly close for what they were trying to do. I just think it's a shame that like it got rejected so resoundly by the fan base. Yeah, that's un- unfortunate. Uh I would still opt to play this over Sonic 1 any day. Yeah. I'm not a huge Sonic. One. I-, I would definitely I mean Sonic 2 and 3? No. 2 yeah, and 3. No, no, no. Way better. Honestly, like I would compare this to Sonic Superstars. It's like that level cuz Sonic Superstars isn't a yes. bad game. But it's it's missing like the spark that like Sonic Mania had. I forgot or... about Sonic Superstars. <laughs> it's missing the spark that like Sonic Mania had, or like the older my older games had, or even like Sonic Frontiers. Like that game had like you know an interesting, you know that that game like had life to it. You know this game kind of doesn't. I'm gonna download it on my Xbox. This game, yeah, because I want to give it a go again. Just pop in and see what all the hubbub was about. Because again, yeah. I remember really liking it, but uh, everybody has their criticisms. And when I'm watching the gameplay right now, um, uh, it looks worse than I remember. Right. So uh, maybe I was on some shit when I was playing <laughs> it. 
Um, well, again, like we were starved for good Sonic at the yeah. time, and that you know at the time this was good. <laughs> yeah, it was the best that we had for a really long time. Uh, all right, well that's Sonic Four. Yes, remember remember her. Uh, thanks for watching the backlog, everybody. Uh, hey, come to a podcast sometime. Yeah, and uh, if you're watching this after the fact, we'll see you later. We're gonna continue our pod. Yes. Goodbye. Bye. I'm just on the Xbox website now trying to see if I can like do a remote download or something. You should be able to. Although Sonic I don't know because it's for Xbox. The it still it might show up in the Xbox 360 storefront, and that's gonna get shut down. Install two. You own this. Let's see. Install two. When you're away from your console, yep. Okay, okay maybe no. they did switch it over to. I don't think I have like my console or something yeah because i remember for a long time 360 games it went straight to the xbox 360 storefront on the web and that's getting shut down like mm -hmm. this year so i guess they moved everything over to the proper i've you know, seen this before for yeah. for x oh actually i don't know i, I I'll, I'll refrain right. uh anyway uh all right more news okay let's talk about we got a lot here so yes. let's plow through as much as we can. All right. Triple I Showcase. Yes. So Triple I is a little cheeky. Uh, yeah. Triple is like, is like indie. Yeah. It's, it's like it's like big indie games. Yeah. It's like triple, triple A. a but it's triple, triple I. I. Yeah. What did, is that what uh, Liam called it for the Curse of the Golf guy? Did he call it Triple I? I think so. That was the first time I ever heard yeah. it. Yeah. I think it was like an insider term, like indie I, studios would use it. I've also heard double A. Yeah. Instead of triple A. Well, I think double A is typically like, you know, your THQ games or like things like that, like your lower tier. Oh, I understand. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Like, like a big company making a, uh, what is it? What is a red light on, on a smoke detector mean? I think, you know, like a, I think it means it's working. Okay. Yeah. I just saw it. And I was like, does that mean I got to <laughs> replace that soon? Uh, anyway, yeah, double A would probably mean uh, a big studio making a small game. Yeah. Or okay. like a mid sized studio making the biggest game they could. Okay. Yeah. I, I understand. Just not like a big blockbuster. Correct. Game. Yeah. And a triple I is a big indie game. Yeah. Like Shovel Knight, I would say, is yes, a triple I. Yes. Shovel game. Knight. Or. Uh, the games in this uh, showcase, the Triple I Initiative, such as Slay the, Slay the Spire 2, which was announced and is in uh, early Steam early or is arriving through Steam early access. I should clarify: Shovel Knight is not a Triple I, I game. Everything that they made after Shovel Knight is a Triple yes. I game because they are were already successful. Yeah, I'd imagine this showcase is going to have a lot of twos in it. Yeah, Slay the Spire 2, Risk of Rain 2. 33 Immortals. They need 33 of those? Uh, Kill Knight was announced. Uh, Shadows of Doubt. Uh, my Time at Sandrock. Didn't Risk of Rain 2 come out? I'm very confused. Risk of Rain 2's Devotion update. Oh, it's an update. Yeah. Because there's Risk of Rain has some weird shit going on. There's Risk of Rain, which is apparently uh -huh. a 2D game. Then there's a Risk of Rain 2, and now they're remaking Risk of Rain original. Okay. Some In some way. I don't know. Okay. There's a lot of Risk of Rain going on. Okay. And I'm interested in that. I want to play it. All right. Uh, my time at Sandrock. Uh, Dino Lords. Uh, Gestalt. Steam and Cinder. Uh, Vampire Survivors. Uh, the big announcement here was it's getting new DLC. Operation Guns. Um, in collaboration with Konami, they're going to add uh, Contra characters to it. Oh, that's kind of awesome. Yeah. Uh, Flintlock, Siege of Dawn, uh, Never Alone 2. There you go. There's another two for oh, you. Oh, there's a dog in it. Yeah. That dog's not going to make that it. That dog's not going to make it at all. Uh, Cataclysmo, uh, Death Must Die. That's a that's good heavy that's metal album. That's a fucking album. terrible name. <laughs> that's a good heavy metal album right there. <laughs> Uh, End Zone Two, uh, Dyson Sphere Program. I thought this is a. Vi I thought this is a picture of a live streamer because there's just a guy in the corner. Yeah, but that's just a guy <laughs> in the corner. Uh, Undermine Two, Nordland. Uh, what the car? That game's sick. I, I it was on Apple Arcade. It's oh, sick. was it? It's good. Okay, we like there what the go. car. We like the what the yeah. Games. 
Uh, a free update coming to Darkest Dungeon. Uh, new, add a new mode called Kingdoms. Uh, RKGK. A stylish graffiti inspired trailer introduced the world of RKGK. Oh, pronounce Araku Gaki. All right, no. Just spell it like that. I don't like the game anymore. <laughs> Broken Roads. <laughs> Um, Raven Swatch, Fall of Avalon. I've seen this. I, is this the one that looks exactly like uh, Prince of Persia? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> nope, nothing nope, at not all. At all. Not yeah, even nope. a little bit. All right. Uh, Cat's Quest 3. Was it 3 in there? Uh, Hyperlight Breaker. This isn't out yet? Releases via Steam Early Access this summer. There okay. you go. So Hyperlight Drifter is awesome. Yeah. Uh, it's like it's it's an interesting take on the Zelda Link to the Past formula. Okay. Because I was gonna say this looks very Breath of the Wild. Yeah, I don't know. This is like a 3D version of it. Yeah. I don't know how that's gonna play out. Uh, the last spell, uh, Lacera Summit Kingdom so much uh wizard of legend 2 uh let's school let's school uh brotato okay uh new dlc called abysmal terrors and it releases this summer um chia chia uh, streets of rogue 2 yes not to be confused with streets of rage 2 which i always do whenever i see streets of rogue this one doesn't have a title for some reason no uh power world power oh yeah there's a uh, power world arena which based on the announcement during the showcase appears to be a new place where players can go and do ba uh, battle monsters and other players that's awesome yeah having a pvp area for power world that is, is cool yeah uh, 33 immortals 33 immortals mouse I, mouse yeah this, this game looks awesome this game does look, it's a doom style uh mickey mouse it's a doom game in the visual style of an old Mickey Mouse. Of Steamboat Willie. Of yeah. Steamboat Willie, yes. This is the type of thing you should do with, you know, Steamboat Willie becoming public domain. Not a fucking horror movie. <laughs> so we skipped, we, uh, we mentioned 33 Immortals, but uh -huh. I want to go back to it and say, I think this is, yeah, 30, 33 people can play at once. Oh, geez. So uh, it's co-op, too. 33 yeah. people co-op playing it. Oh, so that seems pretty cool. Uh, and then we got V Rising. Uh-huh. And the Rogue the, Prince of Persia. Yes, from the creators of Dead Cells. This is double I. Yes. Although I guess the Dead Cell developer is making it. Uh, that They're an indie studio. Yeah. Or they were an indie studio, and then Dead Cells did amazing. Yeah. So, I mean, I still, still think it's a triple I with the backing of triple A. So this, Ubisoft is involved. I was going to mention, I didn't know this was going to be on here. I was going to mention yeah. this when we were talking about Prince of Persia. This game looks sick. It, it does, yeah. It, it, I'm a, I was very happy with... Uh, the last Prince of Persia game that came out, what the fuck was it called? Um, oh, yeah. Lost Crown. Yeah. Uh, Prince of Persia Lost Crown is sick. Uh, and this looks very, very similar. Yeah. Uh, it's being developed by the people who made Dead Cells. Although I will say, the guy who made Dead Cells left the studio and made his own studio. Yeah, there's like a lot of like controversy around like, you know, they made Dead Cells and then like they wanted to like work on it, but the guy's like, no and stuff. So. Yeah, so. This isn't being developed by the guy who made Dead Cells. Yeah. It's being developed by the team who later worked on Dead Cells, I, I guess. I think so, yeah. Uh, so, I don't know. There's... I'm skeptical it'll be anything like Dead Cells. Yeah. But it looks very good. It yes. looks kind of very similar to the game we just got. Yes. Uh, the visual style is more cartoony. Mm -hmm. uh, and it looks awesome, and I'm excited. But hopefully that means they found a niche for Prince of Persia in this world of uh, Assassin's Creed's. And it's first of all, he's got some tiny arm. What, yeah. what is that arm <laughs> over there? Um, it's weird to me that we're get we haven't gotten Prince of Persia in so long, and then yeah. all of a sudden we're getting two back to back Prince of Persia games that are both yeah. these side scrollers. Well, I guess they figured their Sands of Time remake is crashing and burning in front of their eyes, so they gotta like <laughs> do something. I, I mean, I want Ubisoft. Ubisoft has is, they were just rife with horrible decisions. But yeah. uh, Prince of Persia: Lost Crown was a good decision, mm -hmm. and I'm hoping that they learned that there's value in making smaller games, uh, and maybe even to uh, the side scrolling stuff. Yeah, 
Um, however, I hope they don't release two back to back. And if this does bad, I hope they don't take from it that, you know, oh, we should. We release... can't make Prince of Persia's anymore. Yeah, yeah. Or we shouldn't uh, commission an indie studio to make a game for us. Because, yeah. like, there's a possibility people are burnt out by having a 2D Prince of Persia game. Yeah. And aren't going to want this. Uh huh. So. It should have waited a little longer. I had a different IP to 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 give to this studio. Yeah. Um, I think that they might be a little too similar, but we'll see. I mean, I I'm still I still think it's gonna be a great game. I just Well yeah, I mean specifically this is gonna be a roguelike game, so it's gonna have roguelike elements. Oh, that's in it. true. Yeah. That'll make it that'll make it yeah. different. Uh all right. Well, good luck. Cool. So that's the triple I showcase. Yes. Uh, and then we already talked. Oh, let's talk about while we're talking about showcases, let's quickly talk about the BAFTA Game Awards. That's yes, the other showcase. We want to talk, about. you know, we want to try and highlight uh, award video game award shows that are not the game awards. And what better one to showcase than the BAFTA, who does who's like the British equivalent of the Oscars? They also do video games and they had a decent show on this year. Their game of the year, obviously, Baldur's Gate 3. No surprise there. That's everybody's game of the year. Uh, Except award- mine. I played it. It was all right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, best animation went to Hi-Fi Rush. Okay. There you That's go. That's good. That's uh, Wait. Hi-Fi Rush has great animation. Yeah. There's games with better animation. Well, the, nominee- the nominees were Alan Wake 2, Hi-Fi Rush, Hogwarts Legacy, Spider-Man 2, Jedi Survivor, Mario Wonder, and Baldur's Gate 3. Hi-Fi Rush is just cell shaded. Like it's, it's the animation is amazing. The animation is really good, but like yeah. people think animation, they're thinking like you know, like like drawing. And, right. and Hi-Fi Rush looks like that, but it's like Alan Wake and Baldur's Gate had also amazing animation. But right, it's not traditional. It's three D. Well, Alan Wake won the next category, which was artistic achievement. Okay, whatever that means. Uh, audio achievement also went to Alan Wake too. Now that's the category Hi-Fi Rush should have won. Yeah, what the fuck? <laughs> uh, best British game because remember this is England over here. Uh, Viewfinder. I want to play that. That game. Looks yeah, sick. that does look really good. Yeah. I'm gonna put it on my Steam wish list. There you go. Uh, best debut game went to Venba. That's a okay. popular one. That game's like an hour long. Yeah. Uh, oh, uh, here's here's a BS one. Evolving game. This is their equivalent oh, okay. of ongoing game, and it went to Cyberpunk. Well, it evolved. It evolved, <laughs> but like, <sighs> what's so, a better evolving game? So you think like an evolving game, like the other nominees: Final Fantasy fourteen online, Fortnite, uh, Horizon, uh, Horizon, Forza Horizon five. Is that really no count? No Genshin Impact, No Man's Sky. Like those were evolving games. For, Forza Horizon Five got a lot of like DLC updates. I wouldn't say it evolved. Yeah, like the other games definitely evolved. Um, Super Mario Brothers Wonder, Final but, Fantasy fourteen evolved. Yeah, uh, Cyberpunk also evolved, but uh, again, I feel like they shouldn't be rewarded for what they did. Exactly, and <laughs> Final also, Fantasy fourteen kind of should should be. Yeah, rewarded. and also too like Cyberpunk, it stopped evolving. <laughs> <laughs> you know they had to evolve it into a good game yeah <laughs> and then that was it uh best family game super mario brothers wonder game beyond entertainment uh chia okay don't know what that means is that that games for impact nonsense that the game awards does games beyond entertainment yeah you're so blown away by how good the game is i don't know man uh game design went to dave the diver I gotta play that game. Apparently, like people love that game. Yeah, that's interesting. What 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 was that up against? Uh, Cocoon, Dredge, Tears of the Kingdom, Spider Man Two, and Viewfinder. What? <laughs> uh, multiplayer game went to Mario Brothers Wonder. Uh, wait, wait. Uh, okay. Well, yeah. there, there was not a lot of good competition. Yeah. I mean, Baldur's Gate I had mean, good multiplayer. Yeah. Uh, oh. music went to Baldur's Gate Three. Uh, narrative went to Baldur's Gate three. Uh, new intellectual property viewfinder. Okay. Uh, best performance in a game. Uh, Naji uh, Jeter as Miles Morales in Spider Man two. Okay. I can. I'll, I'll allow it. Uh, performer in a supporting role. Andrew Wincott as Raphael in Baldur's Gate three. 
Technical Achievement, Tears of the Kingdom. Uh, EE okay. Player's Choice Award, Baldur's Gate 3. And that's it. Oh, that was voted by people. Yeah. Okay. So, wait, who won the game of the year? Baldur's Gate oh, 3. Oh, Baldur's Gate 3. Yeah. Okay. And, and, and the fan voted was also Baldur's Gate 3. Yeah. Okay. So, Baldur's Gate 3 was the best game of the year. <laughs> yeah, according to like a lot of people. A lot of people, except us. Very weird. Very weird. What was my favorite game of the year? I don't know, man. You played more games one? than me. Oh, it's probably Mario Wonder. Probably. But yeah, there you go. More game of the year awards. Yeah. yeah. This one coming from the British Academy of It's Film fucking awards. April. Yeah. Kind of late. Kind of late to it. Uh, Baldur's Gate 3 is the first game to win five major game of the year awards. There's That's not true. Half-Life won over 50 game of the year awards. The sticker said so on the box. <laughs> No, uh, Arkham, which Arkham game was it that had every achievement on the, on the... Oh, Arkham City. <laughs> the shittiest box art of all time. There it is, baby. Yeah. Woo. Yeehaw. Like, <sighs> that doesn't even look so bad now that I look at it in hindsight. 10 out of 10, 5 out of 5. I mean, compared to like what the original box art was... Oh, bat- that's the thing is that there was a lot of like minimalism. Yeah, and then all of a sudden, like bam, maximalism. Let's put as much shit on there as possible. <laughs> because like the Arkham series has never really had good box art, and like they finally like got like a good box art, and then they just fucking ruined it immediately. <laughs> all right. Uh, next news. Hello, biscuit. Biscuit. Hey, uh, he biscuits. tried to get me to play Baldur's Gate. Too bad. Yeah, because you're not a nerd. I'm not a fucking nerd, dude. Uh, all right. We're talking about Epic Games. Yes, Dude, guys. It's no. You know what? Fuck that. Let's talk about Ubisoft because I want to okay. spend a decent amount of time talking about Ubisoft. All right. Let's start. But this is something that actually got uh, found out last week. Um, but it like kind of slipped through the cracks. Uh, I'll just cut to the chase. Uh, Star Wars Outlaws physical copies of Star Wars Outlaws require an internet connection to install. I don't. Uh this is just we're in a we're in a shitty age right yeah. now. Yeah. Like I I don't know how to feel about this. Like it says right there in the bottom corner uh internet required to install the game. It just like it, it's it's a it's a healthy reminder that yes, buying a game physically you know contributes to game preservation because you'll always have that disc. But we live in a world where that really doesn't matter. The disc is just glorified DRM. You need yeah. and, and you need internet access in order to play the game. And we just last week talked about uh, how they are removing the crew, mm-hmm. and you cannot play it anymore. Yes. So there, in ten years from now, when they lose the Star Wars license, there's a large chance that you will not be able to play Star Wars Outlaws. Yeah. Past even life. if you own the disc. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know how to feel about it like we will soon find out once it gets closer to release how much data is actually on the disc yeah uh i think it's call of duty that has like kilobytes on the disc and then you put it in and it just downloads so that would be unfortunate if it's like that if most of the game is on the disc i mean okay uh if it needs to just talk to the server to like authenticate like all right fine whatever yeah but uh if it's like the way Call of Duty is, that sucks. That yeah. just completely defeats the purpose of having physical. I mean, one of the benefits to getting a physical game is that big box retailers can put it on sale. Right. That's one of the main benefits, I think. Uh, so you'd still have that, but you're not archiving anything by buying this game physically, yeah. which is really unfortunate. That's another big Ubisoft L. Mm-hmm. That also leads me to think that they're cutting corners with this game. That's one small hint that they might be cutting corners yeah i definitely think well i i don't know if it's necessarily cutting corners it's just more of the you know ubisoft bullshit we thought we were past and then here they are reminding you that like nope we're still ubisoft we we oh there's more though there's more yes because star wars outlaws will include a mission at launch that can only be accessed with a season pass as detailed on the game's (laughs) website they're doing the 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 assassin's creed 2 thing yeah or the what was yeah it was two it was two yeah, uh, as detailed on the games. No, because the Assassin's Creed 2, those uh, episodes came later. This is coming at launch. 
As detailed on the game's website, the game season pass will include two additional narrative expansions coming after launch, as well as additional cosmetic items. However, it will also include a day one exclusive mission with Jabba called Jabba's Gambit. Just as Kay is putting together a crew uh, for the Canto Bite Heist, she receives a job from Jabba the Hutt himself, the mission's description reads. Turns out that ND5 owes Jabba a debt from years ago and he has come to collect. Because of the mission season pass exclusivity, players expecting to access every, uh, every mission on day one won't have it with the standard $70 edition of the game. Instead, they will have to buy the $109 gold edition or the $129 ultimate edition, both of which include the season pass in order to get the Jabba's Gambit mission. Keep in mind that you also have to pay those prices if you want to play the game on launch day three days before everyone else does uh, i'm confused the jabba the hut and the hut cartel are one of the main syndicates in star wars alloys and will be part of the experience for everyone who purchases the game regardless of edition but you can't play the mission so the cartel's part of the game but you can't play the mission that is uh, well i guess we'll fig we'll understand what we well okay so ubisoft's response uh, to clarify, Jabba the Hutt and the Hutt Cartel are one of the main syndicates in Star Wars Outlaws and will be part of the experience for everyone who purchases the game regardless of edition. The Jabba's Gambit mission is an optional additional mission with the Hutt Cartel along a K and Nix's journey across the Outer Rim. This mission will be available to those who purchase the season pass or an edition of the game, which includes the season pass. So, so uh, Jabba I, the Hutt is in the game, but this particular mission yeah. is only available to those of you who get the season so, pass. So we don't know the impact of that mission until the game comes right. out. Like it's possible that this mission will be integral to having a relationship with the Jabba cartel. Yeah. Or it the could Hutt just be a yeah. useless mission that's just for a story. Right. Or it could be like Assassin's Creed 2 where it just skips over that yeah. timeline. You yeah. Know? So we don't know how bad this is going to be. But I think... I thought we learned really early on when DLC became when paid DLC became a thing. There was a lot of backlash around uh, games that would have day one DLC. Yeah, uh, it was pretty much general consensus that uh, you shouldn't lock anything behind a paywall. It should be additional stuff. Yeah, like make it after the game came yeah. out so that you have something to work on and we have something to keep the life going of the game if we like the game yeah. uh, don't lock part of your game behind a paywall for no reason yeah uh, but you know we've learned nothing because we've shown that we're like, we will buy these games <laughs> yeah the, the, these big game companies take a little then they take a little more and they take yeah. a little more and then they take a little more yeah. and eventually they break us down and we got broken down there's yeah. a lot about this game that has broken us down yes last was last week or two weeks ago when we talked about uh the fact that it releases early. It was last week, yeah. More. Yeah, so already that's the worst offense that... I take the most offense to that. Yeah. Uh, paying more so that you can play the game early. I fucking hate that, and mm -hmm. I, I, I do not want to support that sort of mentality. Right. Uh, now, now they're doing two other egregious things that people hate yeah having the game not on the disc and requiring a download or yeah. just requiring a download i don't know if it's not on the disc at all yet right. but at least partially requires internet to play a single player game yeah uh people don't like that third thing now the third strike is uh having paid dlc at launch yeah that's absurd and now is there a fourth uh is there a fourth i don't think i put a fourth Oh, no. There, no. there, there are three uh, articles. Yeah, we, it's, okay. it's one about um, the physical release requires the internet connection, uh, the season pass backlash, and Ubisoft's response to it. Oh, the fourth is that it's a woke game. Oh, because it's a woke type game. Oh, because she's not hot. <laughs> I don't know. Somebody somebody tweeted at me and said, really, it's the, the problem is this is a woke game. I won't be buying it. And I said, how is it woke? Oh. I need to know how it's woke. Oh, because it she, doesn't make any sense. Because she's not hot. That's why. Because they, 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 they didn't pick a hot woman to be the main character. Is that really the only yeah. reason it's not woke? Is because she's not hot? Yeah. I mean, but if she was hot, it would be a woke game. Anyway. 
It's women. There's uh, women's the problem. Ugly <laughs> girls exist. <laughs> ugly women exist. I will also say that like the actress who plays her, very beautiful woman. Yes. So I just think it the game doesn't look that good. <laughs> It's not her fault that the character looks bad. I, it's Ubisoft's fault. I would that the like to remind people that in his in his very first video game, Kyle Katarn uh, stole it's the plans. Beautiful. It's he a beautiful stole the man. plans for the Death Star, and he beat up Boba Fett in a fist fight. Uh, if he was a woman and it came out today, that game would be birth at the stake for being yes. woke. So yep. shut up. Enjoy your Star <laughs> Actually, no. Don't enjoy Star Wars. Don't ever look up anything Star Wars again. Don't watch Star Wars. Star Wars is only for me. I am gatekeeping Star Wars from everybody. Star Wars is only for me and my kids. Star Wars has always had strong female characters. Yes. You can't. It can't be woke for having a strong female in it. I remember telling people that like Star Wars like has a lot of like analogies to the Vietnam War. Okay. And like how George <laughs> Lucas was very much against like America's involvement in the Vietnam War and like put a lot of his feelings of that into the movies. And it like blew people's minds. Like, yeah, no, Star Wars has always been woke. Star Wars has always been woke. Yeah. <laughs> no, every woman in Star Wars, even in the very first Star Wars movies were all they they all had yeah, a were, lot of power yeah. in, in the world of Star Wars. Yes. There weren't many of them, but no. you got Leia and you got Mon Mothma, Mon Mothma basically. Yeah. And a bunch of uh X Wing pilots that all got cut because they th they <laughs> yeah. thought it was too woke. But then you cut the to time. the prequels and you know, for all its flaws, you know, Padme was a central character of it. She had she had they, agency. They said they said it's too woke to their words back in the nineteen seventies. Yeah. They said it's too woke to have female X Wing fighters because we don't want to see them die. <laughs> Cause they all died. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, um, anyway, Star Wars was a mistake. He should have made Apocalypse Now instead. Yes, I'm still looking for an answer on why it's woke. <laughs> I, I I refuse to believe it's that she's ugly. Uh, I I want some sort of like conspiracy or something. I'm sure there is. Did you see? I I I'm not gonna give the person credit, but somebody took the the poster for the Fallout TV show, where like she's like it's her back and she's like walking away from the camera, and the guy's like. I'm sorry. I just had to fix this. And he like made her butt more shapely. <laughs> They've always got to be hot. Yes. I don't want to look at another woman unless, <laughs> unless there's something sexual about it. I can't uh, be confronted with the other yes. sex unless they're an object. Yes. And even if she is very hot, not they need to be talk, hotter. Not going to be able to talk to her. If I'm going to be looking at them in, in my sweatpants, <laughs> in my mom's basement. Probably just gonna call yeah, her a C hot. word to her face. <laughs> no, I'm gonna call her C word behind my behind my keyboard. Oh, this is fun. This is uh, a fun episode. Yeah. Uh, let's we can continue the drama and talk about everybody's favorite topic here on the Wolf Den podcast: Epic Games lawsuit. Okay, so Epic. I'll try to summarize it. Epic uh, won its court case against Google, uh, saying that the Google Play Store is basically a monopoly. Um, and Epic has now lined out a 16 page document of what they want after winning uh, the lawsuit. Uh, here are the bullet points. Uh, Epic wants from Google, no more telling carriers and phone makers where they can't or must put app stores on their phones. No more sharing Google Play revenues with carriers or phone makers. Wait, hold on. I want to break this down one at a time. No more okay. telling carriers and phone makers where they can't or must put app stores on their phone. Basically, oh, from Google. Okay, yeah. I, I'm I'm thinking I'm thinking Apple. No, Google. I forgot they could have app stores like the Amazon app yeah. store and 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 stupid ass like Samsung yeah. store. Okay, I, I understand. Yeah. No more sharing Google Play revenues with carriers or phone makers. Yeah. So like, if you buy something off the Google Play store, some of that revenue not just goes to Google and the app makers, but the phone makers and AT and T. Oh, and that's whatever. ridiculous. Yeah. That's ridiculous, sharing it with phone makers. Yeah. Uh, no more agreements with terms that might de... de Incentivize. Disincentivize other companies from carrying competing app stores. Okay, we're really getting into the weeds about app stores. Oh, yeah. No more Android app exclusivity deals or most favored nation clauses that require devs to offer the same prices 
release dates, and content on Google Play as other platforms. I think they should be allowed to make deals. Yeah. You know, like Xbox, you know, like Game Pass yeah. stuff. Like, here's a million like dollars. Epic does to try to get games yeah. exclusive to the Epic Game Store. Exactly. <laughs> like, that, that seems like an overreach. Yeah. So I hope that gets a, a little bit of screen. Yeah. Downloading apps from third-party stores needs to be as easy as downloading from Google Play with no additional steps, warnings, or friction. Save a single tap to sideload them, but Google can block malware and apps that have been, haven't been notarized. That's great. I love that. Why isn't that being uh, forced on Apple as well? Well, because right now, Apple, you can only download things from the App Store. Right. But if they're going to push all of this on Google, they should also push it on Apple. But they didn't win against Apple. They won against Google. Right. I'm hoping yeah. that they look back at yeah. Apple. I mean, Apple is being hit on the other end for other things. Like, right. like, like they lost the Epic case, but they're st the EU is still up their ass. Yeah. Um, this is in America, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's, oh, fucking courts are so dumb. <laughs> uh is it, yeah okay uh equal access to android apis for all developers no typing no tying them to google play store okay that understandable no tying access to other google products and services to use of google play google to allow third-party app stores access to google play's catalog of apps for six years and let users make those third-party app stores perform their app updates Google to allow third-party app stores into Google Play for six years with no fees. No more anti-steering restrictions or incentives whatsoever. App developers would be free to tell users how to, pl how to pay elsewhere or less without paying Google more than Google itself pays to handle an app transaction. That's one of the big things that started this whole thing. Was yes in-app purchases in Fortnite. Mm -hmm. So they're saying now they should be allowed to tell users, hey, buy this in-game purchase on desktop to save yeah. money. I think that's reasonable. Uh, just like on Twitch, if you want to subscribe, it costs more on mobile. Yeah. Uh, so I should be allowed to tell you, go to desktop, mm -hmm. save a buck or something. No more forcing developers to use Google Play billing or user choice billing. Instead, free reign to use alternative payment solutions. That sounds like it could take a lot of money away from Google. No discrimination or retaliation against any app or developer for choosing to use alternative billing systems. That's important. Google to create a com compliance committee with at least three members of the company's board of directors who are not... <laughs> And were not Google employees with a compliance officer who'd tell the court every year if Google's complying with the injunction. That sounds like a big order. Yeah. How many people are on Google's board of directors? I have no idea. Now you want to give three of them a job? <laughs> it, it's a lot is what Google is what Epic wants. And it's all very hyper specific. And I don't I don't think they're going to get everything. No, no, no. They're, they're, they're asking for as much as they can yeah. uh, to see what they can get away with. Yeah. Which is Google uh, board of directors. Uh, yes. 66 board members and advisors. Okay. That's kind of a lot. Yeah. Well, they, could, they could spare three of them. Yeah. To do a, a job once a year. All right. So that's the current standing of the Epic Games lawsuit. This is an important lawsuit yes. because... Uh, it's shaping how the Google Play Store is going to work. And yes. hopefully App Stores Some in that, general. Yeah, it bleeds over to the Apple App Store as well. Apple App Store, yes, importantly. And it seems like Apple is, they got, here in America, uh, we're kind of relying on Epic Games to <laughs> fight that fight. Yeah. Uh, overseas, the EU is doing what Epic Games was trying to do. It's yeah. crazy how like we have to rely on a big company to take down a big company. <laughs> yeah, you know? it, it, that's our freaking country right now. Mm -hmm. It's unfortunate that that's how it has to be. I've been thinking about how... I, I, how I've been thinking about how we talk to uh, 
politicians about uh, these to- sorts of issues. You know what I heard actually like works effectively well, and this is going to sound weird, but if you actually handwrite them a letter, mm-hmm. because what they then do is they take that letter and they use it as a prop in their speeches oh. on the Senate. They can hold it up and say, I got a letter from little Bobby Wolf from Long <laughs> Island saying that uh, Ubisoft should not release the game but, three days but early. Here's the problem with that. You need to get them to think that that's an important issue, you know? Like, right. And then they'll be like, I'm going to use this as a prop for my important issue. Well, you know? yeah, like that's the thing. They ha- it has to be on their radar. They have to think it's important What I've been to- thinking about is going to some of these people and being like, look, I, I'm an influencer. Yeah. If you want some votes... You need to get it. You need to talk about this issue. Your your representative's phone number is available. Mm-hmm. You could l- literally Google their phone number, call them or their office, and talk to somebody. Yeah. And like, who's who's up for re-election? Let's get let's yeah. <laughs> let's see if they're interested in. Uh, let's see if we can get them interested yeah. in. Uh, uh, emulation let's, let's just let's just go right to biden go let's go to that doddering old man just be yeah, like man. hey man you want to win re-election with the kids emulators baby because th- these politicians need to be uh educated on technology Tech, period. yeah because there's Tech. they they definitely need somebody to call to be like hey i got this issue uh is Will what? TikTok connect to my home yeah. Wi-Fi? Well, what's how should we approach this? You yeah. know, like they need somebody to advise them on that sort yeah. of stuff. Anyway, um, just anyone under forty? Yeah, <laughs> anyone basically. under forty? Uh, not you soon. That won't be you soon. No, not me <laughs> soon. EA Play price increase. Let's okay, the rest all of right. It. Let's. There's a. You thought Ubisoft was the only uh, shitty company. We got a lot of EA news right here. Uh, Electronic Arts is increasing the price of EA Play. Um, the standard EA Play tier will increase from five dollars uh, US to six dollars US, and the annual uh, fee will uh, go from thirty dollars to forty dollars. Meanwhile, EA Play Pro subscriptions, which give users extra in-game rewards and perks, as well as access to all of the publisher's latest games as soon as they launch, is increasing from fifteen dollars to seventeen dollars, and the annual membership is going from one hundred and twenty dollars. Uh, sorry, the annual membership is going up to one hundred and twenty dollars um, when it was previously a hundred dollars, uh, and it will go into effect May tenth. Uh. It's a it's this is great news because nobody uses EA Play <laughs> and even less people will use it when they increase the price. Well, isn't EA Play like included in like Game Pass Ultimate or like PlayStation Plus? Fuck. That's the thing. Like <laughs> it's it, it's included in Game Pass, something yeah. people actually use. So like why even have EA Play? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they're like we're not making enough money off of EA Play. Let's charge more. For yeah. It so less people will want to buy it. Yeah, there's just no reason to have it. Yeah. Maybe make some good games. Well, did, didn't we j- recently go through all of the past EA games and decide that there hasn't been good ones? Well, it doesn't look <laughs> like we're going to get any uh, more good ones uh, anytime soon. This segues nicely into our next topic. This was a big uh, big thing last week, uh, late last week, and I feel like it's our turn to put our two cents in. Uh, remember last year's Dead Space remake from Motive Studios? It was pretty good. You could even go as far as to say as it was one of the best modern remakes yet. Considering how beloved the original game is to this day, seeing the development team understand and amplify the horror, revamping the Zero G sections and introducing a peeling system that made some weapons better at dismembering than others, and the intensity director for some of the non-scripted horror, good times. So anyway, it's reportedly not getting a sequel anytime soon. That distinction is important, by the way, but Moto Studio is allegedly not working on a Dead Space 2 remake or a follow-up to last year's remake. Uh, To backtrack, Motive is already confirmed to be working on Marvel's Iron Man in Unreal Engine 5. How long has that been in development? I know, right? Uh, It was recently announced that the studio was also assisting on the developer-hungry machine that is Battlefield, uh, building a new team for uh, for the same. But after the failure of Battlefield 2042, a massive structure change was announced, with Respawn Entertainment founder Vince Sampella uh, becoming the boss of all things Battlefield. Since then, 
Ridge Line Studios has shut down and Criterion is now leading development on single player Battlefield content. Marvel's Iron Man continues having reached a major internal milestone earlier this year. Admit this, Giant Bomb's Jeff Grubb reported on the Gaming Mess Morning <laughs> podcast. I like how he's his name just pops up <laughs> like every time or it just gets like a jump scare when you read it in an article. It just fucking comes out of you. <sighs> Jeff Grubb Jeff said, <laughs> let's write a whole article about this one little thing. Jeff Grubb fucking blurted out. Jeff Grubb farted on the podcast. And that alerted us yeah. that we're not getting a dead uh, dead space uh, two. Uh, he said on the Game Mess Morning podcast that a Dead Space two remake was in the works and motive, but has been shelved due to lackluster sales of the first game's remake. Uh, as for whether it happens or not, Grub was unsure, uh, but it was uh, but it was in the concepting phase, definitely in pre production, and now uh, that work has been sidelined in favor of Iron Man and Battlefield. At this point, you're probably thinking, uh, as most would, EA bad. Uh, but then a twist occurred. EA responded to the report. Uh, did it assure fans that it still loves Dead Space um, and that they shouldn't worry about the future? No. Instead, a spokesperson told IGN outright, we don't normally comment on rumors, but there is no validity to this story. Uh, you think that would be the end, but Jeff Grubb came back. And, and he said on a podcast, Bring <laughs> And that alerted everybody um, that that there is a dead space. He coming. doubled down and said, I give you my permission to believe EA if you want, but whenever a company says that isn't true, but they don't specify which part of the story they are talking about, well, yeah. Dead Space 2 was definitely being planned. It had a code name, and they aren't making it now. Regardless of whether you believe the publisher or Grub, who has a pretty good track record with rumors and industry happenings, uh, he does <laughs> raise a good point. Which part of the story isn't true? The lackluster sales? The Dead Space 2 remake was it concepting phase, uh, what, what? or at least considered? What did I pr I pressed a button. Are we good? I think we're good. Okay. Uh... All right, where 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 was I? It, Here, it, it doesn't matter. Th there's a lot to it. Okay, basically, uh, their Dead Space Two, uh, rumor has it they were working on it and they canned it. Yeah, that's what's happening. Uh, whether or not it was a a remake of Dead Space Two or at least a follow up to the Dead Space remake, it's it's been shelved in favor of Battlefield. They are doing. EA once again copying Activision, all hands yeah. on deck to make the big military shooter, and that would be the next battle. For That's me. ridiculous. Yeah. Uh, although Dead Space didn't do good, like nobody liked Dead Space. No, the people oh, people like Dead Space. They didn't like the other one, the one made by the Dead Space people. Oh, the Callisto Protocol. What's the problem? You know, yeah. the Dead Space remake reviewed very well. Uh, according to a report by Jason Schreier, it. The remake failed to meet EA's um, expectations in terms of sales, which EA does this all the time. They put the most ridiculous expectations on Dead Space, and when it hits normal ass numbers, mm -hmm. they're like, "Oh, it was a failure." I don't know what to do. It was a I mean, they're gonna do that Battlefield. They're gonna put all hands on deck, and then it's gonna do bad. Yeah. Battlefield hasn't been good since what? Uh, two. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, yeah. like three was just a copy of three two, and then four launched with no servers for two weeks well three is when they decided like we're just gonna do our own call of duty that's when they started ripping off call of duty and then you get like this was big map yeah big four map was duty. the same thing and that was supposed to be like the next gen title but it just didn't work when yeah it launched. you got like the su the fluke surprise with battlefield one because that went back to world war one and that was like a nice little like people were novelty in it for yeah a hot but minute. then the next game battlefield five was the world war two one nobody liked that game um because it put a woman on the cover it was too woke uh, um a disabled woman at that a, you believe that she, wait what yeah she was missing an arm uh, <laughs> yeah. so there you go woke mind virus affecting yeah <laughs> um but yeah and then you know even when they moved dice over to do battlefront star wars battlefront the most logical thing in the world because Star Wars Battlefront was just a Battlefield knockoff and they couldn't even do that right. So something is rotten in Denmark. Do the Iron Man game. What the fuck? Yeah, just Star do that. Iron Man game. that. People would be interested in that. Yeah. That sounds like it would be cool. The follow-up article I have just says uh, if EA is saying that uh, Iron Man is still important to us. 
The team has made excellent progress with this hit uh, with this year, uh, hitting a major internal milestone and laying out a robust foundation for the journey ahead. Iron Man remains an important property for Motive, and I am very proud for the work we've accomplished so far. Uh, they have to say that because this is Disney we're talking about here. Right. Yeah. So they're still working on it. They're still, they're still working, working on it. I, yeah. All right. How long have they been working on this game? I feel a like they've while. been working on it for a while. They've been working on it for a while. Yeah. I don't remember. I don't even remember when it was like announced. Hmm. But. All right. Plowing through the rest. Call of Duty players unhappy. $80 Kong glove. What the? Yeah. Uh, also, hold on. Uh, did, you, <laughs> did you see? Have you seen the recent Kong movies? Godzilla vs. Kong? Yeah. I didn't see the one that just came out. I saw Godzilla vs. Kong from like two years Which ago. Which one has the, the the power glove? The new one that just came out. Okay, so Godzilla you don't know anything about, about I had no idea. All glove. I know is that Godzilla now has a power glove. Yeah, I need to know why he has a power yeah. glove. I don't know. Did you see Godzilla vs. Kong? He, is, he's not making the power glove. Somebody I has doubt to it. give I mean, him the power glove. There's that, um, that secret uh, government uh, society, Monarch, that like... Is like the shield of the Godzilla franchise that like runs through it and whatnot. So they, they're, you think they're giving, they him probably up. made him the glove. Okay. You know, does this have anything to do with that glove? I don't think so. Uh, well, no, well, apparently the, uh, so the beast glove, which beast stands for bio enhanced, uh, animatonic, uh, seismic thunder. That's what beast stands for. They really, they tried everything. <laughs> <laughs> like it has look, to be beast. Make it work. <laughs> look, I'm not saying the Godzilla Kong movies are smart. <laughs> Sometimes it's just fun to see the monkey punch the lizard. Yeah, I don't think I was going into it expecting, you know, groundbreaking cinema. I will say, I'm, I'm going to say this, and I, I like, you think I'm joking, and my wife thinks I'm making fun of her, but she fucking loves the God, <laughs> the legendary Godzilla movies. Oh, my God. I mean, She's, I, like, all in on it. What about uh, Minus One? Did you, did you guys see Minus Not One? Not yet. Well, that's a Japanese one. I'm talking specifically about, like, the American ones. No, I understand. I will say, though, the Apple TV show Monarch, fucking good. Oh, wait, there's an Apple TV show? Yeah. It's a, oh, it's, God. It's based on, like, the American... Like, Godzilla. S.H.I.E.L.D.? It's literally S.H.I.E.L.D. Yeah, but, but it's, like, better than S.H.I.E.L.D. Oh, my God. Uh, it helps that Kurt Russell's in it. Anyway, the Beast Glove is available in Call of Duty... Uh, however, this glove is only acquired by purchasing four other Godzilla X Kong themed bundles, and that's where the uh, chagrin begins. Each of these bundles costs 2,400 COD points, which is $20. Um, this means it will set players back $80 to obtain all four bundles required to get the Beast Glove. This is more than the game itself and effectively makes the glove one of Call of Duty's most expensive weapons. And at the end of the day, it hasn't even lived up to expectations. It's just a... So, like, the melee... Oh, there's the glove. Yeah. So, that's dumb. The, the me, My understanding of the melee weapons in this game yeah. is that they are... They all do the same damage. They were just cosmetic. Yeah. So like you can get a sword in the game, but it doesn't do anything different. It just looks like a sword. You yeah. Know? According to um, X Grimalow on Xbox uh, on Reddit, uh, they added that uh, the glove doesn't do anything special, noting that despite the promise of being able to punch like Kong, uh, it didn't even ragdoll enemies. Uh, and you can't equip uh, camos over it. Um, if you were interested in a melee bl blueprint, save the money. It's not worth $80. Yeah, why would it be worth eighty dollars? I don't know. Like, it's so like you would think, like a big crossover, a promotional event with like a big summer movie, you would want that to be a little less than eighty dollars. I really don't mind this. Like, let dummies with eighty dollars spend it on a stupid cosmetic like that. If it did anything like to the game, like if if it added something, like if it was more powerful or something, then I would be upset. But it's just a cosmetic item, I guess. But like, it's still it's. Make it as much as you want. Who cares? I, I feel like, though, that this that slippery slope we were talking about before, like $80 for the Kong glove mm -hmm. is okay. But then, you know, maybe next year it's another $80 for a lightsaber. So, and it's the most powerful weapon in the game. Here's Well, that's the th that again. It shouldn't be something that it changes the be. game. The slippery slope that happens with cosmetic items is there was one that was in the original Call of Duty. It was a it was an outfit mm -hmm. called Black. Uh, was it? I, I don't know. Uh, no, Rose. It was the Rose skin. Okay. And it was just all. It was a woman that was all black, head to toe. 
uh-huh. and you could not see them. If they were in a shadow, it was really hard to right. see them. So all of the sweats would start playing in the rose skin because it would be uh, harder on visibility. Yeah. So that makes the cosmetic item suddenly OP. So they removed it from the game, but if you bought it, you could still use it. In the new Call of Duty, they got Black Noir from uh, oh the boys. Yeah. And it's like, it's the same. It's yeah. the same as the rose skin. Now all the sweats use the Black Noir because yeah. uh, it makes it so you're invisible if you're in a dark area. Right. And that's when a cosmetic item becomes too OP. Mm-hmm. Uh, otherwise, if it's a stupid looking Kong fist, go spend your $80 if you <laughs> like it. I will say, I am going to spend money on Call of Duty uh, cosmetic items because the Snoop Dogg's back and oh. he is an actual dog now. <laughs> And I want it. I want the actual dog Snoop Dogg. Oh, that is cool. That makes more sense than him being a cat in the Garfield movie. What the fuck? Yep. Remember the Chris Pratt Garfield movie? It's not just a meme. It's an actual movie. And Snoop Dogg plays a cat. That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. All right. Um, Next, we got Video Game Studio. Oh, I heard about this. Possibility Space, the studio founded by State of the K creator Jeff Strain, has shut down, according to several social media posts from its former employees. Uh, An April 12th LinkedIn post from Jennifer Laid, who profiles lists uh, her as a live director, social systems director at Possibility Space, reads, My company shuttered its doors today, and there are now a lot of amazing and skilled coworkers that are suddenly open to work. Uh, Please consider that for any positions you have in design, engineering, art, community, and other roles. Um, in an email from Strain, attained by Polygon's uh, Nicole Carpenter, uh, blames the studio's closure on the decision to cancel its major project, which Strain claims made uh, was made after internal studio leaks to the press. The email specifically names Kotaku editor, uh, a senior reporter, Ethan Gatch. And then that's the full email uh, listed below. Yeah, I, I looked into this uh, when it was uh, making the rounds on Twitter. Yeah. Uh, it seems like... Uh, Kotaku went to people at the studio and asked them about, you know, the company and and the games that they're making, whatever. And when the uh, person that ran the studio heard about this, they just closed the whole fucking studio. (laughs) Which is... They were like, forget it. We're just, we're done with the game. We're not doing it. It... That leads you to believe that there was some terrible things going on. Yeah. They never even released the article. Yeah. So, I mean, maybe they did by now. I mean, I would if I... I mean, I don't... If if, if this all Not that I know of. I mean... What was it Polygon's Nicole Carpenter? Like, was the one who like posted the email, and as far as I know, Polygon doesn't have like an insider investigation into the studio. Kotaku didn't do an insider investigation into the studio. Mm-hmm. I mean, I bet fucking now they are. Yeah, like you know, talk about you know trying to hide you know where there's smoke, there's fire. Talk about trying to hide the smoke with more fire. Yeah, th- this seems like a a major uh, just just. Just gaff in uh, in in Which is like, running you know, a company. Studios have leaks all the time. You patch the leaks. No, they like, fucked. They, 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 this company was obviously poorly run. Yeah, I think uh, one of the people who uh, was ahead at Possibility Space uh, tweeted recently that uh, they're like, with all these studios closing, it's important to know that it's usually a failure on the uh, the. A failure on the management, and, yeah. that, and, and that's why these companies closed. And then this company closed, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> because the ha- the head Cause, manager cause is like, oh, they oh, no. are the problem. <laughs> um, so yeah, I, I that's unfortunate because people yeah. lost their jobs. I need to know more. I need yeah. to know. I need to know exactly Who, what happened and whoever why. Whoever was working on this uh, investigative article, please hurry up and finish it. Yeah, I need to know why yeah. why, why the threat of you releasing an article shut down the whole yeah. company. I just imagine they probably weren't in a good place to release yeah. the game or anything. I'm sure, yeah. They're probably going to shut down anyway. Uh he freaked out. This is from Sly Ace on uh, on Twitch. He freaked out and went to their publishing partner to talk about it and they made the decision to cancel the game which closed the studio. Yeah. Yeah, that I I remember that now. People have joked that the publisher canceled the game because the guy ran cross country crying about a journalist asking questions and they didn't want to work with him. <laughs> That's also a possibility. Yes. Uh f- they just didn't want I they didn't want to put more money into it for whatever right. reason. Right. Also, still leaves a lot of questions. Yeah. Because again, leaks happen all the time. Every company has leaks at some point. Yeah. What was so bad about these leaks that you decide to 
nuke the whole thing. Yeah, it shouldn't ruin a company like that. Uh, all right. Uh, last thing, Nintendo has skipped Gamescom. Uh, yeah, Gamescom will be kicking off in Cologne, Germany, the 21st to the 25th of August later this year, but Nintendo has confirmed it will not be in attendance. Nintendo spokesperson uh, confirmed the following. Gamescom is a central event for Nintendo uh, in the event calendar. However, this year, after careful consideration, we have decided against participating in Cologne. Players can try out our games for Nintendo Switch instead as part of other Germany-wide events. So, they're usually at Gamescom. Yeah. Uh, I mean... We saw what they had at PAX. That was not worth showing up to. Yeah. So uh, they're they're having a, a weak year this year. And, yeah. And I I think they're they're taking a little bit of a siesta, and and next year will be uh, their big year, or even later this year, maybe. Yeah. They'll have some big stuff. But, well, I uh, think a lot of people are saying like, if they're not going to be at uh, Gamescom, that probably means they're gearing up for Switch Two, yeah. or like, because last year at Gamescom there was rumored they were showing off the Switch Two behind closed doors. And that got leaked. Yeah, so that's true. And what what did Nintendo did? And now just, they're shutting down yeah, the whole now There's company. no more Nintendo. That's it. And thanks everybody. Nintendo's gone forever. No, like they're dealing with it. Yeah. Like an adult does. Oh, yeah, and it didn't leak that. But oh, oh. what we should have talked about this week was uh PlayStation 5 Pro got leaked. Oh yeah. Um I wanna see, apparently it was a video that got cease and desist. I, I got yes. I gotta find I don't know if they posted pictures because I, yeah. I feel like we would have seen the pictures. Yeah. It was probably just more leaked specs or something. Um, but anyway, that's it for the news this yeah. week. Yeah. Uh, right now we'll do this. Quit of the week! Quit of the week! Quit of the week! This is by Guy with the Pie. Uh, everybody always thinks there's no way I'd make that mistake. <laughs> and it's uh, Bomberman yeah. stuck in a corner with a bomb in front of him. Because the original quote to you was, how do we decorate this space? There's a lot of those on uh, on the Twitters recently. How do we decorate this space? I wanted to Photoshop in uh, Time Crisis Arcade Cabinet. Oh, there you go. That's a good one. But this one was pretty Yeah. All right. Uh, now we're going to talk to you guys real quick. Yes. Starting with people who left comments all over on last week's Wolfden Podcast over on the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Wolfden Podcast. Okay. This one's from Sensual Silence. I love listening to you too. Every week, I found myself going back and re-listening to some older ones. LOL. A lot of people have been doing that. I can't really? imagine that. Listening to a podcast, a news- Like a topical based, podcast. A topical yeah. podcast from years ago. That's yeah. crazy. But I mean, I guess it gives you some insight into what- Into the insanity that is the Wolf Brothers. Well, I was going to say to like what people were thinking about yeah. back then. Uh, I'd imagine we have different issues like back, like, like things we've probably gotten used to yeah. by now, like like subscription services. Mm -hmm. Seven two one zero seven says, uh, my favorite thing to come from the Switch era is the excitement in Will's voice when he says he can play something on the toilet. So like people think I'm doing saying that to be funny, but like I'm not. I genuinely enjoy the idea of not having to pause my game to go to the bathroom. I could just take the game with me to the bathroom that was, and sit down that and was keep the it going. big selling point for us on the Wii U. Yeah. That was and back watch some old Wii U videos. We also talk about playing the game on the Twitter. Yes. But I I feel like, you know, the Wii U had a limit to like how far you could go with it. Yeah, and yeah. luckily our Wii U was directly outside <laughs> of the bathroom true. door. Yeah. <laughs> um also, I was featured in the uh, Retro Dodo book. I already forgot the name. Oh, Handheld History. Yeah. And I talked, I, my chapter was the uh, Switch chapter. Mm -hmm. And you bet your ass I mentioned twice playing it on the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, Joshua Davis says, well, now I don't know how to feel. I turned 40, th oh no, <laughs> this month. And I would have put money that Will was older than me. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. <laughs> I mean, that's just my hard living lifestyle, man. <laughs> uh, sleep on your face. That's that's a good that's a good way to look older than, than you that's are. A, that's a wolf den that, tip. That's a little tip. Sleep St on your face. Stomach sleeping. Sleep on your face. Uh, uh. <laughs> Desrac says, uh, says, "I think people still want to be in the conversation, and it's more one sided." Which is fine if you've never been part of the conversation in the moment. They're referring to how uh, uh, Star Wars Outlaws is releasing early if you pay more. Mm 
Uh, when I say the conversation is one-sided, I mean they played the game late, and now they are watching the com and commenting on things like posts or videos or VODs from the game's release. They are still saying what they think and like, but everyone else moved on, so they aren't getting that, yeah, but did you see this one part? Two-way conversation they would have had in the moment of release. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. That I would consider that not being part of the conversation. Yeah. It's not a conversation if it's one sided. It's just one person talking at you. Mm -hmm. You know? Or it's an or it's an extremely delayed conversation, right. which isn't a conversation. May the goo be with you says people sticking to old games doesn't surprise me at all, especially multiplayer games. Personally, me and my friends couldn't find anything new last year to play because the games that would pique our interest came out broken or lacking content most of the time. Both of those. I hope that game companies don't take this news as, oh, people don't want to play new games anymore. And more as, oh, people don't want to waste their time and money with a broken product. Yeah, we need less yeah. games that are better. Yes. <laughs> is what I would say. No. Give us a reason to put down the game we're playing currently for at least five minutes to check out your game. You know, if your game just looks like the game we're already playing, I'm not going to play that game. Give me a reason to put the game down and go touch grass. Yeah. Uh, the crab in the chat says, I'm 45 and I thought Will was older than me. <laughs> that's that's a lie. Yeah. <sighs> Um, gotta make sure you're consistent in your takes want to find the moment Bob says Mario Wright claims love RPG <laughs> That's, that was fake Wolfden fan yeah. in the chat. we're in the chat and also for the record I am always reading the YouTube chat you guys over on YouTube are you need to be more interesting <laughs> <laughs> I don't read the YouTube chat because you got you got to be bored. Yeah. Uh, what is your juicy take on Keanu Reeves voicing Shadow? Oh, what a perfect casting! Oh yeah, I am a huge fan. I didn't even cons I never even considered. You know that. what? Because the rumors were all like Hayden Christensen, and, and that I, also makes sense. And I like bought into that. Like that seemed more plausible to me than Keanu Reeves. But at the same time, we live in a world where Idris Elba plays Knuckles. Not yeah. just in the movie, but in a streaming show coming yeah. soon. So, clearly, the, Paramount has the money to throw at Keanu Reeves and Idris Elba and Jim Carrey. Let's be, Jim Carrey for three movies. <laughs> yeah, and he's retired. Yeah. So, yeah, I think that, that every single shadow line... I can hear in Keanu. It's Keanu. It's yeah. it, in Keanu's voice. Yeah. I can't wait for Maria to die. Oh, and, God. And Keanu has to react. Yeah. Bob and Will, any news on the Switch 2? Is it still releasing next year? I would imagine next year. Yeah. And there's no news. Yeah. Right it, it, all sides point to it. Jack Dimock in the YouTube chat says, I got nothing. At least he's honest. Gun Shadow is basically confirmed now. They're gonna do like a like a stupid tongue in cheek joke. Oh, where you know that would have made so much sense if like Hayden Christensen was the voice and like he picked up a gun and he says the Obi Wan line so uncivilized and throws it. Okay. Like that would have been <laughs> that would have been cool. But now he can do a John Wick. Thing. But now we can just do the for the third movie in a row. Keanu Reeves can go guns, lots of guns. <laughs> I think he's just going to pick up a gun at some point and then put it down immediately. I don't yeah. think he's going to actually use it. But he should. He should. Uh, Bob, will you be getting the Game Boy cartridge to play Bluetooth on the Switch with a Game Boy? Have you seen this? Yes. Uh, maybe. I mean, that's not, not like something I'd want to make a video out of. Maybe a short or something. That's definitely shorts worthy. I don't see how you yeah. get like a whole like 15 minutes out of that. Yeah, I, I'm not like that interested in it because I have so many. There's so many controllers. I don't know why you need to play <laughs> your Switch with a Game Boy. I mean, you can play your Switch with an NES controller, an SNES controller, an N64 controller. Why not? Yeah, literally anything. 
I need to watch the second Sonic movie. How long I know. is it? It's probably not that long. It's it's a kids movie, so it's got to be like ninety minutes. Two hours and two minutes. Wow, that's pretty long for a kids movie. Uh, how long was the first? I thought that was ninety minutes. Ninety minutes. Well, yeah. one hour and thirty. Well, you minutes. know, it's the sequel, so they gotta go big. Gotta go big. Yeah. Gotta go fast, and they gotta go big. Oh, uh, what's the next project you have in line? Um. Trying to work on a video on the freaking Aya Neo flip. That's what I'm working. I did redo the PCB for the uh, the Flex PCB for the Gotcha SP, the little tiny Game Boy Advance SP. Uh, it's looking good, and I redid the uh, the Flex PCB for it, so it should be. I ordered a new sample. Hopefully, that one will work, and it should be easier to make a Gotcha SP if you want to. How are the Wolfden mugs coming along? I have not done anything with Wolfden mugs at all. <laughs> Uh, would love to see Bob build a living room PC or something. Maybe a tiny guy. I've been thinking about, like, not now, because I just bought this stupid thing, but, like, eventually, like, building a tiny, a tiny PC just to have. Problem is, all motherboards are, like, huge. And There's a laptop. Yeah, There's no, a laptop. I don't, I don't There's want, a desktop. I don't want, la- I want like, a, just a small... <laughs> A small that PC. you can mount behind a monitor. Yeah, but you know, I got I got to do more research on it because like small motherboards are apparently rare and cost as much as big motherboards. Yeah, I like the idea of a mini PC that people use to like emulate stuff, but yeah. they're all like kind of expensive, like yeah. five hundred dollars, and like that's not that much considering it's a PC. But like, I want <laughs> something that's comparable to like. Like a friggin' like Anbernic device, you yeah. Because I, peop, I, I've gotten multiple people asking me for something that they could plug into a TV because they want an emulator that they can just play off of the TV. Yeah. And the best answer is, if you want to spend a little bit of money, the best answer is still something like an Anbernic that yeah. has HDMI out. Yeah. You know, that's fifty bucks, and you can, yeah. and they got Bluetooth and shit. Uh, Spiff says Nux still exists, but like Nux are like. Like six hundred bucks. They don't make them anymore. Intel doesn't make them anymore. Like other companies do. Other companies make Nux. Yeah, they're called Nux. Yeah, I didn't. I and didn't you know, see, I didn't know that was a. Yeah. I didn't know that's a general term. I thought yeah. that was a. I thought that was an Intel thing. What does Nux stand for? I don't know. Asus N- makes them. Nano y- unit. Computing. I'm make, I'm 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 spitballing here. Next unit of computing. Are you also guessing? That sounded like a guess. <laughs> They're just letting other makers make them rather than making their own. Nux are awesome. They're kind of really cool. Yeah. But they're also expensive. Yeah. Actually, here's one on Newegg for two hundred and sixty nine dollars. That's pretty sick. Yeah. I don't know. I feel like for that price, it might as well just like buy some secondhand parts off of eBay and build it yourself, build a small one yourself. Building like, obviously small... not like this big. Like, I know it was going to be like a little bit bigger than that, but plug your MSI into your fucking thing. Plug that in. It's a mini computer. No, no, no. I, that's a gaming <laughs> thing. See, this is what, what I like... do you want this for. What do you need it for? Just a general purpose PC. You, you plug it into the dock. You plug it into the dock, uh, but and I, then it turns into a general purpose PC. All right, fine. I'll turn, turn, turn into the dock. Look at me on pop off. just plug it into the dock. What the you dock. gotta fucking use TurboTax? What do you gotta do on PC <laughs> that you can't do on that thing? You trying to stream? Are we gonna get a Wolf Den Two channel? <laughs> Maybe. Uh- <laughs> Guys, next, next. What? Wh- I'll read this one. Dark Soul Music says, "What's your hair routine, Bob? Don't listen to me. I put keto cortisol shampoo in my hair because uh, that is a, a medicated dandruff shampoo, and they also say that I have face dandruff, so I have to use the shampoo on my face as well." I was at the self checkout lane at Stop a Shop today and brought my daughter with me. And she, of course, doesn't know how that works. So she, like, did something and screwed up the self-checkout. So it got a top-down view of us, like, putting things on the, the scanner. And it got a nice big uh, angle of my bald spot. It's about that big. <laughs> that's what. That's my hair routine. I would let it die. 
just shampoo every other day at most. Doesn't matter if you have dandruff. You probably have dandruff because you shampoo too much. Not you. Talking to other right. people. Um, and also, if your parents are... If, if, if all of the men in your family are bald, finasteride immediately. <laughs> or just let it go. <laughs> Hey, thanks for hanging out, everybody. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching us. Thank you for chatting with us. As always, the Wolf Dead Podcast is every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern right here on twitch.tv slash Wolf Dead or youtube.com slash Wolf Dead Podcast. If you can't make the show for any reason at all, we always put it up as an archive version over on youtube.com slash Wolf Dead Podcast. So you can go check us out over there on demand whenever you want. But if you prefer to listen to us with your ears rather than watch us, you can do that as well because we're also an audio podcast on any and every podcast service such as Apple Podcasts, YouTube Podcasts, Spotify, title probably audible.com that's a real thing but no matter where you get this show from folks please be sure to subscribe rate and review us because that helps us with placement on all of those respective platforms oh wouldn't you like to raid somebody right now oh, i forgot we do that over here on twitch.tv slash wolf um i will be on streaming on thursday i got a lot to do got a big video working on big video it's probably gonna be pretty long oh it's jackson he's streaming he's back from the nihon that means japan i know what that means <laughs> go say uh uh <laughs> i almost said go say ni hao to him that is not <laughs> japanese i've been learning japanese for five years that's and you a would different think, language yeah. <laughs> Say hello to Jackson. Say konbanwa to Jackson, please. Yeah. I'll see you guys on Thursday. Bye, everybody. Bye.